Welcome to the Brandstand Woodwind Shop. This is the 10th and final video in the Restoring a Bass Trombone series and I'm determined to get this finished today. Last week I soldered the slides together and the slide works, well, it works kind of, but it is not that great. So what I'm going to do today is try to get the slide to work a little bit better. When I have a trombone slide, I like it to work at just a little angle like that. I like the slide to slide out. That is about as good as a trombone slide is going to get, but obviously on this one, since it was so damaged, it's not going to be that good. But if I can get the slide to come out at about this angle, usually that's good enough, but on this one it's not even that good. I have to tilt it at about that angle to get it to slide out. And even at that, if I give it a little nudge, it will stop right there where the dent is, where the stocking hits the dent. And if I lower it a little more, then it will come out all the way. But uh, this slide needs a little bit of work. I did a video a while back about the six problems that trombone slides have. On this hand slide, I got a few of the problems solved already. And what's making this not work is probably the slides are bent slightly. And also the dent, the bad dent that was in the slide right here. I got it out most of the way. This still is causing problems with the hand slide. And it probably never will be perfect. When I straighten the slides out, it will probably get better. But it will never be perfect though. On this hand slide, if I can get it to come out at about that much of an angle, I probably will have to be content with that. So I'm going to work on that now, and I'm going to start by trying to straighten out the slides. If you want to learn more about straightening hand slides, I will leave a link in the description below to that video. But for right now, I'm going to try to get these slides straightened, and I'll show you how I do that. To straighten out slides, you need a fluorescent light, and I have one over my bench right there that I use. And I stand on the other side of the shop, and here's my showcase. I use the showcase to put the slide on. And what I do is I hold the slide up to the fluorescent light and then I close one eye and I hold the slide up and look down the slide tube. The fluorescent light makes two lines down the sides of the slide and you look at those lines and see if it's pointing off one direction or the other and then you see if the slide is bent. So I hold it up and it does not look bent that way. So I turn it 90 degrees and I check, and it does look a little bit bent this way, about right here. So what I'm going to do is put the slide on the rag so it does not uh, damage the slide. I hold the slide with one hand. With the other hand, I'm going to push down on the slide, and the rag is to help my hand slide across the side better. And since it was a little bit lower, I'm going to go to where the bend is. If the bend were higher, I'd bend it there or if it were in the middle, I'd bend it there. Also, if it's a bend that goes over the whole slide, then you would go over the whole slide. Or if it's a sharper bend, where it just bends in a smaller area, then you bend it there. And you just do it however you need to do it to straighten the slide out. So now I'm gonna hold it up again. And this looks, uh, looks like it might be slightly bent. And I'm not going to be dealing with a lot of bends on this because it was not bad before. But whenever you do things to slides, it always changes them. It changes a lot more than you would think. You think that, oh, all I'm doing is uh, getting a dent out. Well, getting the dent out also changes the slide, the, the way it's bent. And uh, it might change how it's skewed. It, might, it changes a lot of different things when you do anything to a slide. You guys out there who are trombone players, you probably know that. Okay, I think that slide looks pretty good. Now I'm going to do the other one. And this is the slide with a dent in it. Uh, let's see what we have here. I'm going to turn this around. Try it this way. Okay. Um, now it does look a little bit bent. This direction. So I'm going to... Straighten that out, same way. I'm going to be careful on this one because it did have the dent before. I'm not sure how the metal is going to bend there. It might do. The metal will probably bend differently where the dent was than it would where the dent was not because of the work hardening and everything. So I'm going to try to work this side as little as possible and get it straight as quickly as I can without bending it very much. Okay, that, that looks like it might be okay. And now the inner side tubes, the same way on this. OK, 
Okay, I think that looks pretty good. And that one looks like it's bent a little bit this way. Not bad, just a little bit. So I'm going to push lightly. Also, how hard you pull down on the slide makes a difference too. Like when I was doing this, I was not pushing down very hard, but you can push down harder. You have to be careful not to damage the slide, but you do want to bend it in the direction that it should go though. Looks like I may need to do it a little more. Okay, and then I just keep doing this until it is good. So I've worked on the slide for a few minutes and I got it as good as I could. I don't know if it's much better than it was. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to lap the slide. And I do that with lapping compound. This is Faree's Ultra Smooth Lapping Compound. Lapping compound has a very fine grit in it. And what it does is it fits the individual slides together so that the inner side fits with the outer side. Usually you would not use the lapping compound when you're repairing a trombone, but when there is major damage to a slide and everything shifts and changes, you want to uh, lap the slide to the other side again. So I'm going to do that now. And that may help get the slide past the dent a little bit better. Here's the lapping compound. It's uh, like an oil-based substance. You put a little bit on the slide all over the stocking portion of the slide. And then you do it to the other one also. Then you put the sides together. And then you work the side back and forth. And as I'm doing this, I'm kind of twisting the side a little bit, not too much. I'm pulling it up and down sideways and twisting it. Not enough to bend anything or cause damage, but just enough to work the side. I'm going to work it a little more in the area where the dent is. When I'm done, I'm going to clean it up with a rag. That cleans up the, the lapping compound. And also I need to clean it up inside the side tubes also. So I'm going to do that with the trombone cleaner. Whenever you do this job, Whenever you put the rod inside of the slide, you need to make sure that some of the rag is hanging out of the bottom because if it goes in all the way, when you pull it out, it's going to wedge in there and you're going to have a big problem. So make sure that that is hanging out of there. And I got a lot of junk off of there. Then after I do that, it's only part of the way cleaned now. I'm going to put the side back together and get some valve oil. And I'm going to put some valve oil on the sides. You can also use slide oil with this, but I have a lot more valve oil around the shop, so either one will work. And then work it back and forth vigorously. And again, I'm doing it with a little bit of a twisting motion and an up and down motion as I'm working it. And what that does is it works the slides a little better to clean them up better. And then I clean up the slides again. I'm also going to clean up the outer hand side again. And how I do that is I have a trombone cleaning rod and a piece of cheesecloth. This comes in a very long strip and you just cut off what you need. So you put that through there and then what I do is I hold that up and twist that around. What that does is it makes a soft end of the rod so that it does not damage the inside of the crook. So I'm going to clean that out again. And I may need to do this two or three times. You just do it until it's clean. And now I will see how it works. Hopefully it works better. We will see what happens. Wow, it actually does work pretty good. Look at that. I can barely even feel the dent anymore. Let's see. No, I really can't feel the dent. Well, I guess that I was, I was expecting it to help a little bit, but not quite that much. So that's good. I think this slide may be almost done. All I need to do now is put it back together. I better turn this around so that you guys can see it. I'm not sure if you saw it 
headed in that direction. Let's see. There it is. Look at that. Slide comes out at a slight angle without problem. So we're done. Now all I need to do is put everything back together. I just remembered there's one more thing I need to do before I put this together. There are a few solder joints that I did that, well, they're not perfect, and I need to clean those solder joints up. So I'm going to buff those right now and make those look a little nicer. I'm putting the spindle in the bench motor, and that holds the buffing wheel on. I'm using the Tripoli buffing compound, and also the wheel has to match. That's the Tripoli wheel. And the wheel has to match the buffing compound or else uh, everything gets mixed up and that's not good. And then buffing gloves to protect my hands and then I also wear safety glasses when I do this. You get some buffing compound on there. And this should buff up very nicely and quickly. There's the spot I'm going to buff, right around where the ferrule is. The buffing wheel takes off lacquer, but there is really not much lacquer there, so it doesn't really matter if I can keep it into that one small area. If it wanders too far, then it makes a mess out of things. So I'm going to try to keep it right where the solder is, where the solder needs to come off. Turn it around so I can get it the other side. There's the solder joint all cleaned up. I could touch up the lacquer if I wanted, put new lacquer on here, but the instrument, it's it, the lacquer is not bad on the instrument. I've certainly seen worse, but it's not that good either. So I'm just going to leave this like it is because I want to match what is there. If I made this look really nice and then the rest looked bad, this would actually make it look worse. So I'm going to leave that like it is. And the outer hand side is finished. Now I have a little bit to do on the inner hand side right here. Yes, see that was not that good of a solder joint. So I'm going to clean that one up. Also when I'm doing this, I do not want to buff the threaded section right here. So what I do is I just put my hand over that so that the buffing wheel it hits my glove and not the threaded portion. And then the other side. There it is, it's all done, and that went very quickly. And if you wonder why it went so quickly, in previous videos when I heated and wiped off the solder, it got most of the solder off. There was just an extremely thin layer, probably only a couple molecules thick of solder, so it buffs off very easily when you buff it. I just remembered one more thing I need to do before I put everything together, and it seems like there's always one more thing to do. See how this little ring is right at the end of the slide tube? This one does not have one of those rings. It fell off over the years. So I need to find something to put on there. So I'm going to dig through my pile of scrap brass and see if I have anything that's approximately the right size. Let's see, it's too small. No, way too small. Most of this is going to be too small, but there's probably something in here that will work. Let's see, maybe the end of a flute head joint. Uh, hey, that's going to work. Look at that. The end of a flute head joint. Just the right size. So I'm going to cut that down so it fits on there, and I'll use that. It looks like I've used this before on something else. I don't remember what, though, but I used it on something. I have my jeweler's saw, and I'm going to cut the end off of here. Jeweler's saw has a very fine blade and it makes very fine cuts. 
course a real jeweler would have a much finer blade than this. For band instrument repair, this is about as fine of a blade as you're ever going to need. And I do have different blades. Some are coarser, some are finer. I just use what I need. I did a video before on how to cut brass. And I'll leave a link to that video in the description below also. I'm done cutting the end of the flute head joint off. And I'm sorry to you flute players for doing that, but this was a junk head joint and it already had the other end off. So anyway, that's what I used. So I'm filing it down so that it's even. I'm taking off the burrs. Well, actually I'm taking off the burrs right now with the triangular knife. Let's see how this works. Yep, that looks good. I'm going to clean off the solder and then solder this on. I'm putting that on there. And that is like the perfect size. I'm a little surprised I got something that was that close, but I guess that foot head joint works perfectly. So that's good. And heat it up, put some flux on it. And then the solder, this should be a really easy solder joint. Okay, that's about all there is to it. And now I think I can finally put it back together. There are the parts. I need these two pieces for this one. I'm trying to think which one goes where. I think this one goes on here. These two screws are used for the tuning mechanism. And that allows it to stay in place without moving around when you play it. Now I'm going to put on the water key cork. I put a little bit of liquid shellac on the back of that. And put that in the water key cup. I have this tool to help put on the water key. It has two little holes in it. You put the end of the spring into that. And then... You put that into place and push in the uh, the hinge rod. Let's see. Oh, come on, get in there. There it goes. This one is not threaded. It just pushes in. Usually they have a threading on them, so you screw it in and screw it out. This one it just pushes in and out. And let's level the water key cork. Okay, that's good. That should not leak now. Then I need a rubber bumper for the end of the slide. I have to get the right one. Let's see. This one will probably work. Let's see if this one will fit on there. Yep, that works. And that just helps to protect the end of the slide. This is the slide lock. It goes on here. It's threaded on. And that keeps the slide from coming out when you don't want it to come out. Now I'm going to put some cork in the cork barrels. I need to see how much space I need. So what I do is push in the slide, put on the lock, and then see how much gap there is there. And it might actually be a little more than that though because maybe the slide doesn't go all the way to the end because of the slide lug. And I'm going to try that again. And this little part right here, that's called a slide lug. Okay, it would go in a little bit farther if the lug weren't keeping it from going in. I need about that much cork, plus a little bit more for where the lug stops the slide from going in all the way. And then also a little bit more because the slide is going to compress the cork too. Here's the piece of cork, and it's about the right thickness to fit inside of the cork barrels right here. So I'm going to use this. I need about, uh, let's see, probably about that much cork. If I don't get the right thickness, I'll just have to pull it out and do it again. But that's not that big of a deal. So I will break that off. And then what I'm going to do, because this is a very small area to wrap this cork around, it would break if I were just to wrap it around. So what I'm going to do is take a screwdriver and roll the screwdriver over the cork and you can see that that helps to bend the cork and it also softens the cork so that it will bend around the slide tube without breaking. That's a lot more flexible now than it was before. I pull out the slide so that I can get at the cork barrel and then I push that into it. I'm going to use a screwdriver to help me get that in there. 
Okay, then I go all the way up to the other end of the cork and then I cut it. Like that, and then and then I push that into there and push it in the rest of the way with the slide. Okay, then I'm going to check to see how it is. So it's a little bit too thick, which is okay, because I'm going to compress it in there a little bit, like that, and that is good. So now I'm going to do the other one. And that's done the same way. I push that in, and then push it in with the side. So that is good. The slide section is finally complete, and the bell section is complete too, so I think the trombone is done. I'm going to put this together. Now I'm going to play test the trombone, and I'm sorry, but they pay me to fix instruments and not to play them, and the trombone is one of my two worst sounding instruments, the other one being bassoon. So I'm very sorry, but I'm going to make a little noise on this, and it shouldn't hurt too bad though. I know what everyone was wondering, is it worth the repair on this instrument? Somebody gave it to me for free, so it did not cost me anything. I probably only spent about $5 on parts for this instrument. I do not know exactly how long it took me to fix it, but it probably was about 20 hours, and I probably will be able to sell it for about $750 now that it's done. And I always enjoy working on instruments and taking them from what amounts to junk and turning them into good instruments that people can play and enjoy. And also the opportunity of doing these videos makes it much more enjoyable too. Would I do it again? The answer is yes, I would do this again. I hope you enjoyed this series of videos, and please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos.